You're watching WNDS TV 50, Barry, New Hampshire. Handle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson Family of Dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri State Megabucks and the New Hampshire Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents Candle Pin Stars and Strikes, featuring the best Candle Pin Bowlers from all over New England. Here's your hosts for Candle Pin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Morin. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candle Pin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Michael, it's our fifth year of working together on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We've seen some great bowling in the past. We've got great bowlers lined up for our first ladder series. You're right. As a matter of fact, we're seven months away from the Tournament of Champions, but in our ladder this next couple of weeks, we have three bowlers out of the five that have either been in or have won the Tournament of Champions, including the bowler in the number five position, Gary Carrington, who's won this tournament two of the last four years. Let's meet our bowlers in our first match of a brand new season, our number five seed. As Michael mentioned, last year's Tournament of Champions winner, Gary Carrington from Plasto. Kind of unusual to see Gary in the number five position. Usually he's up at the top of the ladder. Let's tell you a little bit about Gary. He's got an average of 132. High single of 196. As you take a look at his style there, his high triple is 480. Gary Bowling at the Park Place in Wyndham, also Exeter Lanes in a monthly mixed doubles league. And he will be taking on one of the all-time greats in Candlepin Bowling. He's been bowling for a long, long time. Charlie Jutras from Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. Just a couple of months, Charlie will be 68. Doesn't look a day over 50. Charlie's average, 125. His high single is 203. Charlie's high triple is 475. Coming from the western part of the state, making the drive from Canal Lanes in Southampton, Mass., He's here today to take on Gary Carrington. Let's get right to it. It's the first match of a brand new season. We're coming back with Gary Carrington and Charlie Jutras right after this on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WMDS TV. We are ready to go with our first match of the brand new season. Gary Carrington taking on Charlie Jutras. There you see the rest of the ladder climbing up. Uh, Charlie Dutris, of course, at 660. Uh, Chris Bovair, the number three seed at 667. Mike Kucha, new face to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, 687. And atop the ladder, former Tournament of Champion participant, but not winner, Gary Santora at 707. We're ready to go. It'll be Gary Carrington, first to bowl. And the irony, of course, is that he was the last of our last season. He was the Tournament of Champions winner, defeating Mike Morgan in the championship match 459 to 406 winning the $1,500 first prize and also hitting the triple strike jackpot for $1,300 it was a big payday for Gary Carrington pretty unusual to see Gary coming up from the number five seed on the ladder and he starts with a 10 box Gary's been red hot lately as a matter of fact just prior to our taping this match in League bowling at Park Place. He rolled a five-game series of 796, which ain't too shabby, by the That's way. what, a 159 average for five strings? 159 average. And I think he's got a new set of bowling balls, which he used in this fabulous series he had. I'm thinking of getting a new set of bowling balls for our return match. You're looking forward to next winter already for that, are you? Planning ahead. Well, I haven't told you this, but I'm on three leagues this year, so. Are you really? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> uh, I wish you folks could see the look that Dick just shot me there. <laughs> uh, no. Wouldn't have surprised me. Would not have surprised me. I wish I had the time. Just like last year, Dick, we'll end up practicing three days before. Kill ourselves. Charlie Jutras stands up there in his first box of the strike. Charlie's done this before. He has been bowling a long time. I'm always happy when we have bowlers on that are older than us, Dick, which isn't too frequent. You know, not only does Charlie bowl a lot and has he been bowling a lot, he's also a very avid fisherman and makes a nice little side income on it as well. He and uh, John Zernike just competed in a bass fishing tournament in upstate New York, and they finished in second place. Out of 100 teams from uh, basically the northeastern part of the country. 
Charlie with a seven box following up the strike. So after two frames, Charlie Jutras has 23 pins and Gary Carrington has 19. As Gary steps up to lane 34. When did Gary start spelling his name with two R's? <laughs> Sorry about that, Gary. <laughs> Gary matches it. like to put a few more together and go for our five hundred dollars one more he's strike. done that before too hasn't he this is old hat for him five hundred dollars in the triple strike jackpot as we start the new season uh, gary doesn't want to let it grow too quickly obviously <laughs> so he'll be shooting for it next time up charlie Duchess, he wants a piece of the action too he has two strikes in three boxes you are seeing some of the best Candlepin bowlers in the world right here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Watch Charlie Druchis in the pocket. Now back to live action. Will he get another one? Right in the pocket. Leaving only the four pin on a very thin hit with some wood that really uh, is not a factor. He could accidentally bump one of them, maybe get lucky, but he'll go right at it. He's got it. Four, three marks and four boxes for Charlie Jutras. And that's the first spare we've seen today. There were four strikes before we saw our first spare. Remarkable. Now Gary Carrington's looking for three strikes in a row. This is a $500 shot for Gary. He has a kid at UNH, so he could use the 500 bucks. I know that feeling quite well. That'll buy books, and that's about it. For three strikes in a row, he missed the head pin. So now he's looking at bonus money. And not an easy shot, by the way. The one, two, seven, and ten with some wood between the one, the two, and the two and the seven. Surrounding the seven pin, but not getting it to go. Yeah, he'll be in the mid-70s for his uh, halfway point in this game. 74 half for Gary Carrington of Plastown, New Hampshire. Gary's son is a freshman at UNH, as is my son, Stephen. He also has a 12-year-old seventh grader at Timberlane Mid Middle School. So according to your son, does UNH deserve the recognition as the number 11 party school in the country, as it was just ranked early in the summer? My son is studying very hard, thank you very much. That's what he tells you. <laughs> Gary missed the spear there. Now they've been there, what, a couple of weeks now as we taped the show, and, and uh, I asked my son how it's going, and he says, awesome. That's all. It's the only word I need to hear. And you have a daughter in a graduate school? I do. As my well. daughter is, uh, is in her second year of graduate school at Northeastern. Uh, my daughter. After, after having graduated from UNH. My daughter lived away uh, this summer in the area of Northeastern, right near the campus. Had a, a new car that we bought. 12 hours on the street, it was stolen. Oh, no. <laughs> Man. Did you ever find it? They found it, but it took uh, about three to four weeks to get everything put together again before she even made her first car payment. That's Charlie's three marks in a row. Charlie has some bonus money. Charlie is going to take the lead. Four out of five marks. Only a second frame open when he had a seven box. $50 in bonus money for Charlie Jutras. Right in the pocket again. Look at that pocket shot for Charlie Jutras. Another oh, man. $25 in bonus money. That was a no-brainer. That was right in the one-three pocket. Let's check his uh, ID to make sure he really is 67 years old. Well, he threw that one right in the oh. pocket. An 81 half for Charlie Jutras. You hear about the advice that Charlie Drutus gave to Gary Carrington prior to their. This was back when they had the roll offs a couple weekends ago. I did see it in your notes, yeah. Gary almost picked up the spare with a tough shot. The advice from the seasoned veteran Charlie Drutus to Gary Carrington, and I quote 
Gary, make sure you get a good night's sleep. Ten bucks for Gary. Three tens in a row after the double strike. He's only left one pin standing and nine box in the second frame. A little trouble hitting the head pin the last few frames. This time it's the one, two, four, nine, and ten with no wood on the deck. Difficult shot, to say the least. We mentioned that Gary won last season's Tournament of Champions. He also won back in 1998, defeating Rob Burkeel, 428 to 385. The New Hampshire State All Events winner back in 2000. And he gets a seven box. He's at 101 through eight. Now Charlie Druchis tries to add to his bonus money. Pocket. There he goes. My oh my, he's right in the pocket. Four strikes in seven frames. I mean, they're not cheapies either. No, they're not. He's hammering them right in the one three pocket. Well, this is a $500 shot once again. Our second chance for $500. We go back to live Charlie looking for the third strike in a row. That time he missed the head pin. As you watch the replay, we can tell you the Charlie. Charlie's last strike. He was off the head pin on this attempt. One, three, six, and eight. Looking for more bonus money, not able to convert. Suddenly he's rolled up about a 30 pin lead over Tournament of Champions defending guy, Gary Carrington. And that'll be a nine box. Thirty-four pin lead. Clash of the Titans is one way to describe this pairing today. Winner goes on to face Chris Bovair, who won the Tournament of Champions two seasons ago. Dick. Gary Carrington in the pocket leaves the six pin standing. Everything went flying around. Here comes a piece of wood rolling over toward the six pin. Don't think it's going with enough force to cause any damage. As a matter of fact, it's too far out in front. Rolls right into the gutter. Here yeah, you get a it. good look at Babe Carrington. And the spare. Again, off the head pin for Gary. He just puts five in the mark. He will be open in the 10th frame. He's at 124. He'll be below his average of 132. You know something? I don't think Gary Carrington has ever not won on this show since you and I have been doing it. 126 first string for Gary Carrington. Won the Tournament of Champions twice. He won his ladder series to get to both of those. So uh, he's never, he's never lost. Charlie Dutras on the head pin. Leaves himself a split. The three, six, seven. Charlie's high triple of 475. Look at this shot. Oh, it went over the top of the seven pin. The three pin went flying over the top of the seven. He is looking spectacular today. Every shot is right there, except that one. Nine bucks, 144. Still looking at a nearly three mark advantage going into the second game. Gary Carrington actually under his average of 132 at 126. Charlie will be considerably over his average of 125. Six marks for Charlie, four of the strikes. He crosses over to the Brooklyn side. Five pin is wobbling, but will stay up. A lot of cards and letters that we received during the course of the uh, off season, if you will. We'll get to some of those during our second string this afternoon. Look at this, look at this. Will it go the seven pin? still stands so twice in a row the seven pin is thwarted 
Charlie Drutras. One thing I do want to point out as you watch this show, we're happy to tell you that Candlepin Stars and Strikes is back to its traditional noon start. And Charlie finishes with a 154 and a 28 pin lead over Gary Carrington. After one, we're coming back for the middle string of our three string match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. All right, Charlie Juch is ready to start the second string. He takes a 28-pin lead over Gary Carrington into this middle string of our three-string match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin and our entire WNDS-TV crew are here to bring you all of the action of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Today's program directed by Stacey McCutcheon on audio is Don Cronin. Larry Taylor's working the replay machine. Monica Colby's on computer graphics. Paul Hunter is our engineer running the video machine. And our camera crew of Kevin LaFon, Steve Kenny, Kevin Sheehan, and Cheryl Sylvia all here at Lita Lanes to bring you all of the excitement of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Our in-house scorekeeper for the uh, folks here at the uh, Lita Lanes gallery that can't actually see the TV monitors is Paul Ouellette. And I believe his well, third season now since Chris Beauvert retired and is in the active bowling circuit these days. Charlie Juchus with another strike. He had four in his first string. Well, there you go. See how it looks like from the outside you can see in. see it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Is Gary Carrington. Step into the line. Both bowlers had a shot at the triple strike jackpot in the first string. Both with doubles yeah. that couldn't convert. Doesn't happen very often. Gary Carrington pretty much shook us loose and broke the bank on the last broadcast of the Tournament of Champions. He went about $1,300, I think, was the... Uh, I think that's correct. Because it went all season, went to the very last, uh, the second to last string of the, of the whole year. And an eight box for Gary. It was certainly an exciting Tournament of Champions, that's for sure. And this is the beginning of the first of six ladders that will eventually lead to six bowlers that will be in the tournament of champions that you'll see next april and may of course in the middle of the year we break it up with the mixed doubles competition which happens uh, usually in december and january with the men and women michael mary french of laconia writes that uh, they're delighted with candlepin stars and strikes on wnds tv they watch the show every saturday and sunday they tape if something comes up but 95 percent of the time they sit in their living room to enjoy an hour of bowling and she also asked about the time change as I mentioned earlier the show was shifted from noon to one for a while but now it's back at its customary noon spot we hope it will be there for many years to come thank you Mary French for writing in from Laconia I think people are just programmed you know genetically somehow to see bowling at noon on, on Sunday it's been that way since the late 50s when Channel 5 opened it up at noon and of course, we've been on that schedule for almost our entire now 18 seasons. And the other questions that Mary French also asks in her letter is about the showing of the reruns and how they are determined over the course of the off months when ah, we're not taping. It's a very good question. Well, what we do, Mary, at the end of uh, the regular season, as I go through the records, take a look at some of the more interesting matchups, the closer finishes. We also try to include uh, some of the mixed double shows and then show the Tournament of Champions in its entirety, which you saw concluding last week leading into the first week of this new season. So it's not by accident. We do you know, skip around because we can't fit all 33 weeks into the summer season, but we pick the best shows and hope that you enjoy watching those again. Charlie working on two marks in a row, looking for some bonus money. He already has $75 in bonus money. He's got a tough shot here. On the right side, he's got the six, nine, and 10, and on the left, the seven. Some wood on the deck, which might help him. I think the shot goes, Michael. Nope, not quite. I'm not sure he hit it where he wanted no. to. He went a little bit to the right of that, that one pin sticking out. But he's got the lone seven pin in the corner for a 10 box. And a 10 for Charlie Jutras, 52 through 4. If you've got a computer and you'd like to go to a couple of pretty good bowling websites, get your pencils and papers ready during a commercial break, which is coming up here very shortly. And when we come back, I'll give you some website addresses to write down that I think you will enjoy if you're a bowling fan. Here's Gary Carrington right through the middle 
Almost a spread eagle, not quite. John Dillon from Charlestown, Massachusetts writes, it's a pleasure to watch Candleton Bowling on the weekends. It was great when Channel 5 in Boston used to carry it. Thank God for WNBS. You guys do a great job. The thing that amazes me is how many bowlers bowl over 400 on the show. Years ago on Channel 5, it seemed like the scores were from 360 to 375. Occasionally, you'd get a 400. Again, you guys do a great job. I hope you'll be able to watch Candleton Bowling for many years to come. Well, very insightful because the, yeah, exactly. the, the scores were a little bit lower years ago. And, and the, the pins have changed, and the balls have. have changed, and the, the game has yeah, changed. Yeah, the, the equipment really hasn't changed probably since the 60s as far as the, the pin specs and the weight and the plastic composition and everything. But there was a time when the pins, of course, were wooden. Uh, before my days of, of living in New England, but uh, you were around, Dick, back in those days as a young... You're from Worcester, aren't you? Uh, did I ever tell you that? <laughs> Gary Carrington with a mark as we go to the break. The spare for Carrington. It's Carrington and Judris going at it head-to-head. -head. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS-TV. Charlie Juch is ready to bowl on lane 34 at Lita Lanes. He has a 42-pin lead in the match, minus what Gary Carrington will get on his next ball when he comes up to the line. Jutras has been right on the head pin for most of the match. That time, too full, the spread eagle. I promised a couple website addresses for those of you that would like to go on the Internet and, and see some very good spots to, uh, to read and experience bowling. One is candlepincorner.com. And, uh, Dick, these are some very creative people. Kevin Cormier and his partners have put together a wonderful website that actually documented uh, how the show is put together with some photographs and some... Have you seen that site? I've not. Uh, uh, candlepincorner.com. There's some actually some pretty funny shots of, of you and I with little horseplay that we didn't realize <laughs> was being captured by digital camera. But there's interviews with various bowlers. In fact, I'm the featured interview this month. It's candlepincorner.com. Don't forget your www, which your computer might already put in for you, but it's candlepincorner.com. And for those who would like to know a little bit more about the Pro Tour, this one address is a little bit longer, WCBC. Pro Tour, wcbcprotour.homestead.com to find out how the pros are doing. Charlie will be open in frames five and six. And that'll be an eight box for Charlie Jutras. And Gary Carrington has a chance to pick up some ground. Again, continuing on with some of your cards and letters, we'd love to hear from you. Our mailing address is Candlepin Stars and Strikes, WNDS-TV 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. As we watch Gary Carrington fill the spare, and he'll put seven in the spare. One, three, and the six. No pins on the deck. It's a nice, clean shot. He'll attempt to go right between the one and the three. Went around it. Thought he had it, but couldn't convert it. Letter from Julia Majory from Raymond, New Hampshire. I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, Julia. Dear WNDS, my son, though only four years old, is a bowling fanatic. He's on a youth 10 pin bowling league, but watches your candlepin bowling show from Lita Lanes faithfully. I called Lita Lanes to find out when the next taping was so that he could see it live, but they couldn't tell me exactly the next date within a couple of weeks. I need a little notice so I can get off work. Is it possible to find out a couple of weeks ahead of time when the next taping would be? Julia Majory and Kyle from Raymond, New Hampshire. We have an answer for that, Julia. The next taping will be on Tuesday, the 9th of October. That's Tuesday the 9th. We start around 10 o'clock in the morning. It goes till between 4 and 5. We'll do four shows that you'll see the following four weeks. And we'd love to have you here at Lita Lane. And when's the one after that, Michael, in case you can't make that one? Uh, the one for November will be Tuesday the 13th. 13th is a Tuesday in November. Again, the 9th of October. Two 10 boxes for Gary Carrington. Charlie Jutras with a 31-pin lead in the match. Again on the head pin, but this time a little bit too full again. Not quite the spread eagle. The 3, 6, and 10 on the right. The 4 and 7 on the left. Piece of wood between the 4 and the 7. Charlie Jutras has been on television 742 <laughs> times. 
<laughs> you would think that. Uh, 46 times, once with us and 45 in Boston. His first appearance with us, Dick, was last season. We're glad to have him back. I do remember, and I don't want to date Charlie, but I do remember when I, don't I was a little younger, when I was a little younger, uh, watching Channel 5 and watching Charlie Drudges, and that's quite a few years ago. It is hard to believe that Charlie had a dry spell of 15 years just in the last couple of years, found his game again, just had a bad spell of 15 years, and now he's winning like crazy, and you can see why. Will it go? It's going to rock, but it's going to stand up. So it's a three pin with uh, some frozen wood just to the left. And a 10 bucks for Charlie. So the mark parade has slowed down. Boy, hasn't it? Just three marks between our two bowlers. We had about seven or eight strikes between both of them in the first string alone. Back to Gary, who still trails in this match and indeed in this game. Not anymore, though. How long did it take for those pins to go down? Not long at all. They were buried. Strike for Gary Carrington. That's his third strike of the match. He throws them in bunches. Watch out. Right on the head pin. Not able to get the strike. Here comes the strike at you. Now we're back to live action, and Gary's unable to convert the spare. He'll fill his strike with a nine and take the lead in this game for the first time. Since the first frame. So he's picked up eight pins in this string, and now it's a 20-pin advantage for Charlie Jutras over Gary Carrington. So we've got ourselves a ball game. Charlie Jutras with a mark. When he's not on the nose or on the head pin, he's getting tremendous action. If he's just a little left of center, either way on the head pin or, or even flush in the pocket. But boy, if he's on the nose, he's punching out today. He needs to stay off center. See, trouble again when you're too full. A couple of them still going down. Imagine me trying to give Charlie Jutras advice on bowling. I apologize, Charlie. I am not worthy. I want to acknowledge several notes that we received from Tim Gregerson. We've had the opportunity to meet here at Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And one of them that I'll uh, note is kind of cute. He's a, well, he's, just a, he's a teenager, right? Yep. For those of that don't know the name. Tim says he enjoys watching Stars and Strikes, and he also likes taping episodes, depending if he likes the final results or not. <laughs> Charlie uh, cooling off some, dropping uh, over 40 pins with a 112 for his second game. And no bonus money for Charlie in the second string. Now Gary Carrington looks to try to gain some ground. He'll break up the split. And the wood is gone. It's the two and the four. Picks the two right off the four. It's a game of not inches, but millimeters. Ten box for Gary Carrington. Pick up the losing ground in that box. He was up against the strike with an eight bill for Charlie. So now Gary Carrington up against an open frame in the tenth box trying to make it closer. Right on the head pin. Look at that. Takes out the one and the nine. That is ugly. You've got, well, everything but the one and the nine. So Gary will be open in the 10th frame as well, and Charlie Drutus will have nearly a 30-pin lead going to the third string. Seven box for 
Gary Carrington, a 111 second string. It will be a 29 pin lead for Charlie Jutras. Headed to the third and final string of our first match of a brand new season. We're coming back to Lita Lanes right after this on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Gary Carrington will be first to bowl in the third string, and he trails Charlie Jutras by 29 pins here at Lita Lanes. We're ready to go. One twelve for Charlie in the second string. One eleven for Gary. Both bowlers well below their average. Gary Carrington starts out with a pocket shot that leaves the six and ten on the right side. Gary was the winner of the final WCBC tournament back last March for the last season. Thirteen eighty nine. He won nine hundred fifty dollars. Gary opens with a mark. Was also ranked the number three bowler in the WCBC last year, and that's simply uh, compiled by adding up the total pins for five of the six best scores that a bowler, in other words, they can drop their lowest, their lowest ten string total out of six and come up with the, with the best five. Gary was number three last year, so he had a good season. Right on the head pin that time, too full. Broke up the spread eagle, but a tough shot remains. And an eight box for Gary Carrington. Waiting in the wings as we climb the ladder is third seeded Chris Bovair. He'll take on the winner of this match. And he's a good 20 years younger than, than uh, Gary and a good 40 years younger than Charlie Jukas. Charlie right in the pocket that time on the Brooklyn side leaving the five and the nine. Normally you'd think, oh, bowling my grandpa, I'll whip his butt. <laughs> well, I got news for you. Grandpa's still a pretty good bowler here, I'll tell you, Charlie Jutras. Opens with a spare. He's been very active, not only in the Western uh, New England Candlepin Bowling Association, uh, but he also is, is still bowling with the, the pros of all ages and in the senior tour. So he stays very busy between fishing and bowling. I'm not sure how he finds time to do anything else. But the beauty of retirement, Dick, you can, you can enjoy your avocation in a little fuller way. Well, he put in his 38 years at United Aircraft as an assembler before retiring. Now he's doing things that he really enjoys. He didn't enjoy that first shot, nor the second shot. <laughs> Half Worcester and then a couple more. It's tough to imagine anybody these days working any place for 32 years. Look at, you know, between the two of us, how many jobs have we had in broadcasting? More than I care to remember. Seven box for Charlie. So he'll give five pins back as Gary Carrington shaves a few pins off of Charlie's lead going into this final match. By the way, the uh, winner today goes on to meet Chris Bobear, as Dick pointed out. The runner-up takes home $150.00. First prize, though, and we'll see who that is in three weeks. Gets $1,000 at the top of the ladder. Gary was off the head pin that time. Looks to break it up and gets a pretty good outcome with a makeable shot here. The one, the three, the nine, and the ten. Wood behind the three. Joanna. Ten pin is the wild card here. Yep. Oh, he got them all. Big spare for Gary Carrington. Trying to apply the pressure. He needs to string a few of them together here because Charlie Dutris is not going away. Although he has cooled off some since the first game. They both have, actually. Gary looks to fill the spare, and he puts nine in the spare and has the seven-pin staring at him. What is problematic there? It's not angled real well for him. I'm going to guess he's going to try to go at it without catching the tip of the pin, which is up closest to the front of the plate. Tough shot. Got to thread the needle here, just like that. He well, got he it. He, he it, hit though. the pin, and he yeah. got it. So the spare for Gary Carrington. Three marks and four boxes for Gary as he tries to make a run at Charlie Jutras. Charlie Bowles at Canal Lanes in Southampton, Mass, owned by Joan and Chet Kamikowski. A couple of terrific bowling proprietors, very active in the bowling industry. Well, Charlie threw a good first ball, and he 
left a solid five pin. Clutch shot by Charlie Jutras. Do you think he ever gets rattled, Dick? Do you think that there's ice water running through Charlie's veins? I think everybody gets rattled at certain stages, but I think some guys get more accustomed to the rattling and how to deal with I the see. rattling. Did, did you get rattled when uh, when you bowled me back in March in the <laughs> Pilgrim Lanes? It's a blur to me, Michael, now. I hardly remember it in any of it. It was no accident that I scheduled the rolling of the Tournament of Champions once again in its entirety so we could see the entire grudge match. <laughs> Leave it to you, Michael. Well, you Your day will come. You were very unkind to me the season before when you beat me the first time around. Your day will come. Charlie will be open after a five kill in the spare. Nine box for Charlie Jutras, a 19 pin lead for Jutras over Gary Carrington. But Gary Carrington has a ball to fill when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Gary Carrington ready to bowl on lane 34 at Lita Lanes. He trails by 19 pins less whatever he gets on this first ball, which will fill a fourth frame spare. And he fills it with eight. He liked that shot, too. He thought he was going to get better than that. So he'll put eight in the spare. That cuts the lead to 11. All right, how do you shoot this one? It's the uh, it's the four and the ten with some wood in the middle. There's a piece of wood that's out front. I think I go to the right side of that wood, right side of the front wood, and take my chances with that. Otherwise, there's no real way. That's what he's doing. That's the shot. The spare for Gary Carrington. Three marks in a row, fifty dollars in bonus money. But more importantly, getting ever closer to Charlie's lead, which is now razor thin. Got a letter from Howard and Carol Finkel from Port Charlotte, Florida, Michael. Wow. We're big in Port Charlotte. <laughs> Gary looks for four marks in a row. Will it go? He gets double wood in front of that two pin, which is still standing. Are these people that are receiving pirated tapes of our WNDS broadcast through relatives up north here, Dick? Gary with the spare four marks in a row for Gary Carrington. Another $25 in bonus money. And now the pressure reverts to Charlie Jutras. Carolyn Howard Finkel writes that uh, it's a late reply to one of the letters that we read on the air in the spring. Since they only watch the show when their friends Ed and Beth Power tape the shows and send it to see? them. See? They didn't get to see the final tournament until we were off the air. The question was raised about how would a pin be scored if it fell over but then bounced back up? And did anyone ever do it? That is Charlie a good question. Going for a spare. There it is for Charlie. He responds to the pressure. I will have to check the rule book well, on here, that. Here's the response. The question was raised about how it would be scored. Believe it or not, I saw it happen one time in the 50s. The pin was hit and actually righted itself. The proprietor said he'd never seen that happen before, but he thought the pin was live and that she'd have to hit it again to score the point. Charlie fills the spare. Another pocket shot. Look at the veteran Charlie Juches respond to the pressure put on him by Gary Carrington. Puts nine in the spare and another spare opportunity for Charlie. This should be a gimme for a guy like Charlie. And it is. Charlie Juchus responds. And he's got an 11 pin lead in the match frame to frame with four boxes to go. His, one, his one time 40 pin lead is now down to just a mark. But it could have been a lot closer oh, sure. had Charlie not responded to Gary Carrington's four marks in a row with three marks of his own in the four boxes. Charlie's uh, vast experience in the game certainly is uh, very much to his benefit here against the champion Gary Carrington. Gary looks to add to his bonus money and continue the pressure on Charlie. So our thanks to Howard and Carol Finkel from Port Charlotte, Florida. We appreciate you're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And another spare for Gary Carrington. Well, that's five in a row, Dick, so the bonus money just accumulating like crazy for Gary. That's, uh, he's got 100 bucks in bonus money in this string. 
And he keeps the pressure on Charlie Jutras, who must continue to match him frame for frame or fall behind. And as far as uh, the Finkels are concerned, I give you permission to tape the show. It's on the house. No royalties required. Gary looks for a mark. Not going to get it. The run of marks ends at five. And that'll be a 10 box. He's at 123. And now let's see what Charlie can do. A chance to really put Gary wow. Carrington away here for a couple of marks of his own. Take a deep breath. Focus in like a laser beam. And fill his six frame spare. He's in the pocket. He'll put eight in the spare. Had a bit of a skip lob there, but it uh, worked out okay. Very makeable spare. It's the four and the seven with no wood to, to worry about. And here's the spare for Charlie Juchas. You're watching a veteran in action, a guy who's been through the wars and who knows how to respond to the challenge. If he just turned on and he didn't know who this guy was, you would say there's no way he's 67 years old. It's in fabulous shape. That was a little thin in the pocket. And he'll put six in the spare. This is a tough shot. But he does have the help of that, that extra pin that's against the five. Not at a really great angle, but he might be able to make something out of this. Three, five, six, and seven. Will it go? Will not. So Charlie did collect $50 in bonus money, which we neglected to mention for three marks in a row. He has $125 in bonus money in the match. And that's a 10 box. That matches Carrington's 10 in the eighth frame. A 12-pin lead for Charlie Jutras. Two boxes to go. Gary Carrington needs to double mark. What a great finish this should be. First week of a brand new season here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Two bowling icons, and they're just 12 pins apart with two frames to go. Well, he was in the pocket, didn't get much for it. On the right side, he's got the three, six, and 10. The four pin is on the left side. Tough shot for Gary Carrington. He must make it. Won't make it. He's going to be open. That'll just about do it. Ten box for Gary Carrington. Having his best string of the day, he but he needs a double strike here. Now. A double strike. I think he's been known to do that a couple of yep. times, including today. Going to miss the head oh. pin, and that's going to. Give the match to Charlie Jutras. Charlie will not even have to mark. And I believe it's the first time we've seen Gary Carrington not win on this show since Gary he and I puts it right through the hole. And he finishes with a six box and a 139. And Charlie Jutras needs five pins to win the match. We'll watch Charlie get his five, and then we'll take our break. Charlie Jutras is the winner of the match, so we will come back to meet our bowlers when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues on WNDS-TV. We'll be back right after this. Every time the veteran Gary Carrington made a run at Charlie Jutras, Jutras had the response. He did. He certainly didn't uh, fade or wilt under the pressure. And why would a, a guy who's bowled over 40 years and been on television 46 times? But uh, certainly Gary Carrington can be a very imposing figure on the lanes. But that wasn't the case today. And I think you got to chalk it up to a, a 154 opening string for Charlie Jutras, who got a big lead and pretty much held on to it uh, right to the end. Final score, 397 for Jutras, 376 for Gary Carrington. Let's bring up our runner-up this afternoon, Gary Carrington from Plasto, New Hampshire. Gary, congratulations to you. A check for $150 for being the runner-up, $100 in bonus money. 
You got the match close in the third string. You threw five marks in a row together, and you had Charlie thinking about it. But, boy, when you play a veteran like that, he knows how to respond, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. He's been around a long time. You know, out of all the bowlers, there's uh, Mike Sarge and Charlie Jutras. That's what I grew up on. That's what I always watched and everything. So it's really fun. It was fun bowling against him. Guy's good. Always has been. Well, a you've, long time. you've been good, too, in the past. This is the first time, I think, that since Mike and I have been doing the show that you lost a match. You, you've always won your ladder series and won the Tournament of Champions, so uh, perhaps we'll see you back later on in the season in another run at the Tournament of Champions. Yeah, I'll be shooting for it. We'll I'm not going to stop here. All right, Gary, thanks very much. Right. Gary Carrington, our runner-up here this afternoon. Thanks, and now it's time for our bonus ball contest. Charlie Jutras will step up to lane 33 and bowl a ball in our bonus ball contest and we'll try to match him up with a winner at home. Go ahead and roll a ball, Charlie. Roll a ball down lane 33, I think we want you to go on. And then we'll have you matched up with a winner from home and see if we can give away some money. Roll that ball in the bonus ball contest. Charlie hasn't done this in a while, so we'll see if we can match him up. It looks like it's gonna be a four. So we'll bring Charlie over here and Mike will reach into the bin and see if we can match them up. What do we have for the bonus ball contest? Are we starting right at 10 bucks, I think, for, for the- For $10, that is correct. start of the new season. Yes, it is. And this is from Charles Maluski of Worcester, Massachusetts. Did I ever tell you I was from Worcester? Many times. And Charles picked seven, so it's not a match. We have a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. Let's bring Charlie Jutras in, our winner here this afternoon. Charles, congratulations to you. You got out to the big lead early in the match, and then Gary made a run at you, but you seem to have the answer. Well, I had to make the big run on him because he's probably one of the better bowlers going today. And it was really an, an honor to bowl against him at my age. <laughs> we were talking during the course of the match about pressure. Yeah. And at times when, a, when your opponent starts to make a run at you, you yeah. feel a little pressure. But you've been through it so many times. Yeah. Do you still get nervous? Do you still get you anxious? Do, you do, you know, but you just, have to, you, know, you just have to do what you have to do. You don't want to throw a stupid ball or do something bad because, you know, it's a game of breaks. And if you throw a bad ball, you're going to get a bad break. You got off to a great start with the 150 in the first string, and that kind of set the tone. That was good for me, I'll tell you. We were talking about the mat during the course of the match about your fishing exploits. You were telling me before the match that you were in a tournament uh, just this past weekend. Tell us about that. Yeah, they had the New England Championships over there on the Hudson River, and I bowled with John Zer and I fished with John Zernike, and uh, we ended up second. So that was that was a good weekend. You were pulling bass out. How big were they? Oh, they were up to three pounds. We, and we had uh, John caught one about four. We had some real nice fish, so. Another good weekend. Charlie, congratulations. We'll see you next week. Charlie Jutras, our winner here this afternoon. Charlie. As he defeats Gary Carrington, and up the ladder we go. It's still hard to believe that Charlie.